Hello, and today I'm doing a stock analysis update on Greencoat UK Wind PLC. Greencoat are a listed renewable energy fund which invest in UK wind farms. We've got a really complicated organisation of how the company is set up, but the company that you're investing in, Greencoat UK Wind PLC, essentially borrow lots of money plus raise money through capital raises and then use it to invest in already existing wind farms. The main purpose of the company is to maintain the share price at about NAV, either by doing share issues or buying back shares as appropriate, and then paying back dividends in line with inflation. Don't think though that if you buy them now, you'll be getting 10% dividends already, because when I looked into it, it seems that their dividends seem to trail by a year. And although they've actually designed their current dividend to be about 7%, when I worked it out, I calculated it myself based on their Q1 dividend. Based on their Q1 dividend, you only seem to be getting 5.5% at the moment, which is probably because the share price has gone up. But they currently own about 1.5 gigawatts of wind farm assets in the UK which is actually 5% of UK wind farms. So in a nutshell, they're really just a investment company and their aim is to keep the share price steady. It only actually variates by about 10% plus or minus in the last five years. So you'll never, so you can't expect the share price to go up loads. They're more just a stock to own to get the dividends. Now, the thing that strikes me the most about this company is just how complicated they are. They operate via a load of these holding companies and they do massive capital raises and also take on loads of debt. And then through this complex arrangement of different holding companies and things, they then just buy up wind farms. The wind farms, I get the impression that the wind farms are then just run by their initial owners and they're like packaged into what they call special purpose vehicles. But by packaging the wind farms into these special purpose vehicles, it then enables them to operate more like just an investment fund. But the problem is, it's very hard for me to understand this kind of company structure. Now, if you go on my channel and you see the video I did on these a year ago, I go into a lot more detail there about the company structure where I break down how I think this works. I'm not going to do that for this video, but go and look at that if you're interested. Um, the fact is that without having the time available and the, and the expertise, I can't really understand what it is I'm investing in. It's just too nebulous for me to understand the, the real, uh, what, how this company is really ticking and how the money's all moving around in terms of its company structure. So from their 2021 annual report, we've got some interesting facts here. The first is that if the wind doesn't blow, they make less, they make less electricity. And uh, here you can see each year, according to how the wind's blown, they produce less electricity, with last year being particularly bad at minus 20%. They've actually, however, done really well because because of the energy crisis, the price of electricity has jumped up from 35, 35 quid to 170 quid per megawatt hour. They have like a mixed portfolio. So some of their projects, the, the prices they get are kind of fixed. Others, they can go up or down according to the, uh, according to the UK energy market. So they've definitely benefited from the higher energy prices and will continue to do so. 67% of their windmills are onshore and 33% offshore. I kind of prefer offshore. And in terms of asset age, only a quarter of their wind turbines are over 10 years old. I think we're fine for a good decade, but one worry I have about this company in the longer term is when they have to start decommissioning all these windmills. We know that that's priced in at the moment, but I wonder, will the actual cost be more than anticipated? That could be a cliff edge coming in the future. 
but not for quite some time. Here's all their current windmill assets in the UK. And you can see in green here, I've highlighted the new, I've highlighted the new additions. And there is a quite reasonable growth in the, even in the last year. So here's their stock price. Like I said before, it's only actually a 10% variance up or down. So essentially, the, you can't expect the stock price to really go up much. Um, maybe there is like a slight upwards trend in line as they continually build assets. But no, don't invest in this stock because you want the share price to go up. All they ever promise with this company is that they're going to pay you a dividend return in line with inflation. Now, here you can see all of their wind turbine investments that they've achieved over the last five years. Particularly, of particular note are the Humber Gateway and Haunty One offshore wind projects, which are quite interesting projects to me. And they've invested, for example, 10% into the Haunty One development uh, only this year. Other than that, not much going on apart from these capital raises. It really is remarkable that over the last five years, they've managed to achieve these huge capital raises, even though the asset, manage the asset managers piling into this know that they're only gonna get typically a 5% dividend return and the only other thing that happened really was uh, at the beginning at the beginning of this year they announced that Schroders had took over 75% of their investment manager now the investment manager is this legal entity which exists in parallel to Greencat UK Wind PLC that you're buying the shares in so they kind of provide a service for Winco UK Wind now, currently, the investment manager is essentially these two guys who have run Greenco since it started, I believe. And um, it's just really strange that now Schroders have come in and own 75%. Presumably, these two guys will still run it, but Schroders will be there kind of as an extra check and balance. So, so I can kind of see where, why it's a good thing, because... Schroders can also access loads of capital maybe in as well but they're, they're kind of a, a good kind of second check independent to the running of the company so i can kind of see why that's good but at the same time it's a bit weird it just comes across a bit weird and again it kind of highlights i don't really understand what's going on how this company really runs and operates and this uh and this 75% acquisition of the investment manager highlights that. So looking at their profit and loss, um, we can see nice increases in their income. I can expand on it on my Excel spreadsheet here. Is Mainly it's this return on investments. And this return on investments is composed mainly of dividends received plus this unrealized movement in fair value. Now the, dividend, now the dividends received, this, are, this is actually the special purpose vehicles, which are all the different wind farms. They pay the green coat, the parent company dividend, which is the profits from the electricity they've sold at the wind farms. They're paid as dividends to the main company. And that's it really, that is, that is the majority of the income. But then it's kind of lumpy because you've got these, they do a, they do a adjustment for the fair value of their assets every year. And so some years like 2018, that's quite big. And also 2021, that's quite big. So I've got all that in this graph. This is their income over the last five years in a graph. And you can see that the dividends received, which is basically the, electric, the electricity they've sold, it's going up grad quite nicely as their portfolio increases. And because of the massive in, and because of the energy crisis this year, we see that it's kind of doubled. So this is really good. You know, it's very healthy, and they're 
their income from selling ele electricity has doubled even in the last year. And then it's just a bit unfortunate that we've got these big adjustments every year uh, based on the movement in fair va values investment, which although has gone our way this year, I don't like having these lumpy adjustments every year. And then on the expenditure side, their operating expenses are mostly management fees. And these are, as you can see, where they have to pay expenses to these different entities just to kind of run the company as an investment fund. And then finance expense, which as far as I could make out was mostly interest on debt. So here you can see I've broken out, I've broken down those and you can see it's just mostly management fees anyway. So actually in terms of Greencoat UK Win PLC, the expenditure is fairly low and the income is pretty nice. So this looks like an amazing profile. Here's their net income history visualized and it does all look really nice. But you've just got to remember the lumpiness caused by the uh, movements in fair value. And their debt is only one billion. And it is actually quite impressive that I think mainly because of all these huge capital raises, they've managed to build up a portfolio portfolio of four billion from only one billion of debt. So that does look very positive. There's not much current uh, current assets and debts, and that's because they are operating really as an investment fund. And all those little ins and outs of short term buying and selling stuff, those all I believe those all will be going on within these special purpose vehicle packages. So that's why you don't see them. So the consolidated statement of cash flows is a different angle to looking at a company. And actually here I do get to see the dividend payouts and the capital raises, which are things that are missing from the usual income statement. So, so we saw that in 2021, they got 242 million from SPV dividends and they gained 638 million from issuing shares from asset managers who just, who were queuing up to buy shares in this windmill company. They then used that to spend 572 million on buying new wind farms and they used 141 million to pay off debt and then they spent 31 million on finance costs and 139 million to pay out in dividends so this is definitely a very healthy cash flow statement however what if they weren't able to do all these capital raises how would it look then well assuming that they didn't buy any new wind farms and they didn't use any money to pay off debt. I established that they have to pay 23 million in terms of interest on the loans they have. So from that, I calculated that they'd actually still be positive. They still have a 49 million positive cash flow in 2021. So I believe they are running fairly healthily. That's with uh, energy prices at double what they were. From this point, though, I wonder you know, they're currently only paying a 5% dividend. So as they move towards having to pay 10% dividends in order to match inflation, then it will perhaps be a slight struggle to do that. And um, particularly in light of, you know, which would rely as well on the, on the energy prices still staying high. But, you know, I don't think it would be too arduous for them to do that, but not as easy as it has been with 5% dividends. So they are, as, you can, as you'd expect, their market cap is around the net asset value. So this is based on end of 2021, where the price of book was 1.2. But I looked at their latest NAV update, and that has their NAV now at about 1.02. 1 so there's been kind of like a couple of, so there's been like a couple of sea changes recently. Um, the share price is at about NAV now, where historically 
it's always been about 20 been up to 20 percent above nav so that's kind of a bit strange why we've had that reduction to nav recently whereas they've always had these really easy capital raises i wonder is it going to be so easy for them now to raise capital in current market conditions and that could have an interesting dynamic on how they're able to increase their asset base and they're going to have to start paying out higher dividends in the coming years whereas before they're only before their whole business model was was based on paying about five percent dividends because i don't think they expected inflation to to venture above that when this was all first conceived but generally i think they're a healthy ship so in the end of the day i've decided not to invest what i can't understand generally i think these are quite a good company if you want to get back nice dividends they've definitely passed most of my tests i can't really see much wrong with them to be honest their their basic numbers look great and the price of energy has gone up because of the energy crisis it's generally looking healthy statement of cash flows look good they can i think they can deal with paying higher dividends even and their equity and valuation looks good on the face of it they're a great they look like a great place to park your cash for high dividend returns but ultimately a few things have changed recently particularly the inflation picture and uh, the capital raise situation could change and ultimately i just find them a bit too nebulous i can't quite get my hands around how the money is flowing around and how they're ticking because their their tax structure is so complicated i can't truly say i understand what i'm investing in so I've decided to take them off my watch list just on the based on the principle of don't invest in what you don't understand. Some important points are I noticed that their dividends seem to trail inflation a bit because they make their they make their dividend announcements at the end of the year and then pay those over the next year. So don't buy them now expecting 10% dividends this year. You're probably more going to get something like 5% it's been very noticeable that their job's been very easy over the last five years because all of the asset managers have just been desperate to throw money at them in the capital raises but i wonder could there be a sea change there how will that change things they're definitely going to do well out of the energy crisis because the higher cost of electricity does seem to be benefiting them however because of then inflation they're going to have to be paying out high dividends so that causes a bit of a higher burden on them so on balance though i've worked out that they'll be fine so ultimately the biggest risk is what is the what am i actually investing in risk how does the end of the easy money assuming that happens change the dynamic of the company and another risk is this new government windfall tax there's been some news that the government might be taxing energy companies that produce electricity even from renewable sources it's kind of interesting because these wind projects only exist because of government subsidies in the first place and then it's then crazy how they're, they're then clawing back some of that but there is a risk of that and that could then also affect this company so that's obviously an important risk to consider so that concludes my stock analysis update for greencoat uk wind i hope you enjoy and good luck with your own investments please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up if you enjoyed this video and would like to support me i'm on patreon there's a link to my patreon page in the video description below